everyone. So today we're going to do some serious sewing. Now um, I'm going to start with this bag. All right. Now I want you to bear in mind that all these bags, these two, the two pencil cases, the small, the large one, and this little pouch here are all made in exactly the same way. All right. So I am not going to show you all of them. So I will be showing you this one and I just have something I just want to mention to you that someone said are your tutorials for beginners no they absolutely are not because my tutorials are for anybody all right um, if you can put your foot on the pedal and keep an almost straight line then my tutorials are for you I do get a bit complicated sometimes, but you know, if you can do that, you can follow. If you can follow instructions, then you'll be fine. Okay, I mean, my students will tell you, they get quite shocked when they're new to sewing with me. They come and I get them doing, you know, piping in a, a zipped cushion and things, but that's the way I roll, just in at the deep end. Okay, so let's crack on. So, if you have read my, if you've listened to my first tutorial, this is what I asked you to do, okay? And that is what I've got in front of me. Everything you need, plus a couple of other things. Right, you will need one piece for the front, well, two pieces, the outer, two pieces, the inner or the lining, two pieces, you will need something to stiffen it. I'm using headliner, but please use whatever you have, interfacing or anything. I'm using headliner. You will also need something for the strap that goes along the front. Now, it doesn't matter what you use as long as it's something stiff. I happen to have this, um, in my sewing thing so I'm using this it's quite wide but use whatever you want to Petersham or just some folded interfacing all right you need to fold it in half first fold the piece in half first of all okay then pop it in there it's inside and then fold over with the ironing board the iron, fold it over there like so, and then fold the other one up to meet the edge there. All right, so that's what you need. We need a zip. This zip is longer, but you can use any length zip, but not, not a metal one, a nylon one. If the zip that you've got is too long, then by all means use a longer one if you've got it. And this one takes a, a, a nine inch zip. All right, but this is quite long, but that doesn't matter. We can cut it. The other thing you need is a piece of fabric, which is matches, which is two inches square. All right. Then again, fold it in half and then fold it down again. But one of the sides needs to be deeper than the other. Can you see that side's deeper than this? So that when you fold it over, you've got a little lip there. Can you see that? That little bit sticking out. You must have that so that you can catch the stitches when you're machining over the top underneath. Otherwise you could miss the stitches. Right, the other thing I've done here is I have cut a pocket. This is the only one really that you need a pocket in. The others you don't. They're makeup bags, pencil cases, so that's okay. So with this, just one A4 sheet, that will be fine. All right, I'm going to set the machine up and I'm going to start machining. Right, so the first thing I need to do is to machine at the back of the front fabric the headliner. It doesn't matter which way around you do it, but and I've also got a walking foot attached on the machine. So do do yourself a um, a seam which is 
smaller than five uh, than half an inch so put, uh, about quarter of an inch but don't be too worried about it and I've got my machine set at 3.5 okay so I'm just going to machine round these two pieces like that and I'll be back so here we are I've machined around both of these and joined these together but obviously, if you're not using um, headliner, you don't need to use a walking foot. I prefer to use a walking foot. It stops it from slipping, all right? If you're just using interfacing, you can just use your regular foot. Right, so I'm now going to do the strap along the front. So I like to do several lines of stitching, which I'll show you when I've finished. So under the machine we go again under the machine and i will be back in a minute okay so i have machined this as you can see i do the two outside ones first then i go into the center right the way down and then in between the center lines to the outside line so then you get five lines right so So now I would like you, please, to measure up four inches from the bottom. Let's get that a bit straighter. Four inches from the bottom and lay this on top of that four inch mark. There we go. Four inch mark. I'm a snipper. I don't know if you're a snipper, but I'm a snipper. OK, so we're going to pop a pin in there so it doesn't move pin in there let's turn it around that way it looks prettier around that way around that way there you go and straight across to the other side oof stiff right straight across to the other side so machine down here, just hold it on and down there too. There we are. Sewn on, just to hold it on, just a, um, a row of stitching down there and a row of stitching down there, just to hold it on. So next, we're going to get on with the zip in this. Now, I know a lot of you won't like putting zips in, but it's not that bad, really. Hopefully I can prove that to you. Right, so here's your tab you made for the end of your zip. So as you can see, it's stuck out underneath. So that when I machine across here, it will catch the one underneath as well, the piece of fabric. Right, I've changed the camera angle now so that you can see what I'm up to. So at the edges here, at the sides you must have clear from your tab at least half an inch do you understand that all right i hope you do right so i'm going to chop this end off at a reasonable place and i reckon that's about right I'm going to put the other end on there. I must admit, I'm not really one for pinning or tacking, but you know, you must do what you need to do, all right? So, but I always, always pin the tabs this way on the end of the zip, because if you don't, this small piece can go sideways, but it needs to come straight down. All right. So here we are. I've left a good half inch each side. You must have that seam allowance each side of these, uh, this bag, okay? I always put a tab on the end of my zips because I think it, it it just looks more uh, finished, more polished. Okay, I'm now going to put on the sewing machine 
my zipper foot. I have several different types of zipper foot and this is the one. This is a generic one and most of you will have one of these with your sewing machine. So I'm going to just uh, place this on the machine and I'm going to sew the zip on and I'll show you what I'm doing. It's quite difficult for me to get the angle for you to see exactly what I'm doing but there's uh, to the left hand side of this zipper foot there is a piece that sticks out and that is where I run along the edge of the zip. I always pull it away from the edge a bit because I uh, some things I machine obviously have the five inch seam allowance so um, if I pull it away it's more like five eighths so lift your clamp up close your zip up and carry on I always open my zips to the left hand side. I like the pulley to be on the left hand side. Oh. Okay. So I hope you can see this. Sometimes you can find a line actually on the zip that you can follow. I don't know if any of you have found that before. All right. So I've machined um, that on there. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to place the lining, your two lining pieces, right, that goes over the top like this, over the top of your zip, all right? Over the top of your zip like so. And then you machine it though from the back along the line of stitching that you've just done. All right, that way you won't see your stitching on the outside. Right, I hope you can see this. So I've sandwiched the zip between the outer and the lining. All right, I am now going to top stitch the outside. Can you see? This is going to be your seam allowance at the side here. Right, I'll just do the other side and I will top stitch this and do the other side. Right, before I get on with the other side, as you can see, I've now top stitched that along there. Um, top stitching isn't just for decorative purposes. Top stitching keeps the lining away from the getting stuck in the zip when you use your bag. All right, so I'm now going to put this one, I thought I'd show you before I do it. Now, here's the other side. So we put that on there. Okay, so that goes on there. There's your, there's your zipper, okay. The next piece goes along there. As long as you've got the two front pieces together, then you know that you've got them on the right way around. So I'm just gonna go and machine down there. Right, so this is how it will look. All right, and I am now going to put on the other lining. The other lining does the same. You must be able to see the stitches on the other side. All right, so there's the stitches and I'm going to follow that line of stitches and then flip the lining over. So here we are. Can you see I have the zip on? We've only nearly finished. Here you go, zip at the back, inside, there you go. Right, I'm now going to put the pocket on. So. I have the pocket here and I am just merely going to sew machine down here. I'm going to go to here, leave a gap 
there, there and back up there and I'm going to turn it through and press it. So here I am back, um, I've ironed, now I've, there's a hole there, don't worry about that because I'm going to machine down here, long here and up there, okay? Now remember what I said about the pocket needs to be at the bottom, all right? So that if it's folded over, everything doesn't fall out, all right? I might actually move that a little bit lower, it's a bit too high. I'll just machine around the pocket and I'll be back. Pocket sewn on the bottom. Now, very, very nearly finished. So that is exciting. So we open up like so. And we have to machine a right the way round, leaving a gap at the bottom of the lining to turn it. Now, I would use a wider seam allowance on the bottom of the lining is because linings don't take up as much room as the outside all right um so the more you go inside the smaller it gets all right which is why the lining needs to be a bit shorter and even at the sides if you can imagine all right so here is very important these two seams here, you see, this one and this one must line up. Otherwise, it could look like a dog's dinner around the zip. So make sure they're pinched together and get a pin in it. You know, you can always stop machining just before you get to the pin if you don't want to go over the pin because it's quite thick now. Okay, so I've put that in there. Get another one on the other side. Get those seams put together because nothing looks worse than where the zip is if it's up and down. Right, so I'm going to pin that one as well. Let's see. Right, that's in there. So machine right the way round and keep away from the tab on the end of your zip. All right, you've got space there to do your seam allowance. You don't need to go running over the top of that tab. All right, I'm gonna machine it um, and I'll come back and turn it, all right? So here we are, we've nearly finished our bag. So it looks like so. So when you get to these pieces here make sure that they're poking up like so can you see that there's your ends so and this one turn it through turn it a bit right there we go so both ends are are there you see it makes a nice neat zip right i'm just going to machine up the hole in the bottom there is my pocket at the bottom there i'm going to machine the hole up and i will find a brooch for it and there you go so here we go here's our bag now i've been looking at brooches but i'm not sure what to put on it so um I need to tip the whole pot out, which will take quite a long time. But, you know, I quite like that one. I think that one might be okay on there. I don't know. Colour's good. And then there's a little one there, which has got the purples and uh, lilacs in it. The same. Um, I've got that one. That's rather special, isn't it? Or... No, that's a little bit too ready, I think, that one. No, no, maybe not. And this one is just way too over the top. I reckon that one is going to be on a Christmas stocking. Hope you're all going to watch that. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do for this tutorial. I hope you understood. Um, if you didn't understand, please tell me, um, ask me anything that you want to ask. 
Um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm loving this. I've got someone to talk to. So um, I will be back tomorrow. I will do a small, small tutorial on the more boxy um, makeup bag. Okay, but I hope you understand that all these bags here, so I will not be doing another tutorial for a flat bag like this because, right, get that up the right way, that would be better. Okay, so I'm not going to do another, oh, that is up the right way. What are you doing, Christy? There you go. <laughs> Okay, so those two are the same big pattern and I hope you understand that these are all made in the same way, just a smaller structure. Um, and if I undo this like this, you can clearly see that it's just the same as these, but without this piece on. Okay, thank you so much, much for watching. <laughs> For watching for watching um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and press that bell if you want more from me thank you for watching thank you